Hello, welcome to this video. In this second MPS use case, I'll still follow up my final product with the mass production schedule, but I'll use other replenishment methods for my components. If you would like to know more about which replenishment method to use for which kind of products or for which kind of use cases, there is going to be a dedicated presentation, high level presentation on the big differences between those three replenishment methods and they're going to be available on our forum. So please check that one if you would like to have more details on the differences. Now, one of the parameters on which you can distinguish the use of each um, procurement method or replenishment method is the lead time. So for long lead times, we'll work with the mass production schedule. For short lead times, the make to order strategy could also be an alternative. And if you're in between, uh, you could also use the reordering rules. So for my reordering rules, I'm going to work with a minimum of five units and a maximum of 15 units. Now let's have a look in Udo. So the first thing I'll have to do is a setup, setup of my products. Now in Udo, by default, the MTO route is archived. So you'll first have to unarchive it. I already did it, which means it's available for me to use on my components. I have my lead time of the day, so this component is configured. And then we'll move to my next component where I'll set up the reordering rules. So I'll set up a reordering rule. It's always at a specific location. I'll use five as my minimum quantity, and I would like to, my buffer stock to be maximum 15 units. And I also want it to be triggered automatically. Now, if you're working with reordering rules, please check that on your purchase step, you have a supplier defined. Otherwise, the reordering rule doesn't know for which supplier he should create the RFQ. So let's now sell our product. So I'm going to sell to my customer 10 units. And I would like to have them delivered on July 30th. 30th, okay, I'm going to confirm. And I have my delivery order for 10 units at July 30th. Now, when I go to the mass production schedule, I see that indeed for July 30th, I have an actual demand of 10 units. So I'm going to check with my uh, colleagues from purchase, from uh, manufacturing, and we come to agreement, we say, okay, there is no other forecast demand. We don't see anything, there's no big sales. So we agree on the forecast demand for July 30th to indeed be 10. Udu is going to calculate and he's going to suggest a replenishment of 10. If I do replenish, a manufacturing order will be generated for my final product. So when I open up this manufacturing order, so the delivery was on July 30th. My manufacturing lead time is 14 days. So I need to start this on July 16th. Now, next thing we notice is this step over here, which has child manufacturing order. This is due to the MTO route, which is a very strict route. We have this direct link between the need, which is in this case the procurement for the final product or the manufacturing order for the final product generated by the MPS, and the procurement being the component we need, and the component also has a manufacturing order. So you see, you can directly link from the child MO, which is the one for a component, to the source MO being. So this is the first way you see that the and your route is a strict route and that there is direct link between the need and the procurement. The second thing 
There's also another way to see this, and that's when you go um, directly to the manufacturing orders, you also see that the source of the component, the manufacturing order for the component, is indeed this manufacturing order for my final product being tricked by the MPS. Now, the second thing about um, the strict, uh, why, the, why we call the MTO route strict, is that um, the MTO route expects that the components, the 10 units he needs in order to uh, produce this final product, are going to be exactly those 10 units produced in this manufacturing order. It's, he's not going to take 10 units out of the stock, different units. He's actually, he's really specifically reserving these 10 units created in the linked child manufacturing order of this source ammo. So if we have a look at the dates in the child manufacturing order, so we know that we need to produce our final product on the 16th. This one, this component has a lead time of two days. So we schedule this production order should start on the 14th of July. Now, let's have a look at our other component, the one we purchased. And I, the one for which we set up reordering rules and we would like to have a purchase order. So you see that the reordering rule that there is already right now an RFQ created. Now we notice four things. First, it's the date, and secondly, it's the quantity. So if you call back my source MO, so my final product needs to production needs to start on July the 16th, which means I also need my component on July the 16th. My lead time was seven days. So I would have thought that I, my order deadline would be July 9th. I step still. So that means that if I order July 9th with a lead time of seven days, I have my part available on July 16th when I need to start producing my final product. However, we see that Udo calculated an order deadline of today, July 2nd. Now, what happened? So the products for which we use reordering rules are products for which we would like to build up a buffer stock at a specific location. And we're going to use this buffer stock to meet the unexpected demand of our customers. Now, a reordering rule gets triggered when the forecasted quantity goes below our minimum stock quantity we defined on the reordering rule. So in our case, this is five. Now, the forecasted, now what's the forecasted quantity? Yeah, and when does it go below our minimum quantity? The forecasted quantity is based on the quantity on hand, which in our case is zero for the moment. The outgoing moves within now and the supplier lead time and the incoming moves um, taken also into account the supplier lead time. So in our case, the reordering rule identified or do identify that currently there is already a need because our current stock of this product is zero. And we define that we would always like to have five units in stock. So instead of waiting until July 9th to actually do this replenishment, he's already going to trigger the, re the reordering rule now because he has a need now. He identified that we asked him to have always minimum five units in stock and currently he has zero in stock. So he already triggered the reordering rule today. And for which quantity? For the 15, because he will always try to um, fill up the maximum of my buffer stock. Now, if I, um, so those are two different uh, we see with this, um, yeah, so there's no link with the order deadline, with the order deadline in the MPS, and also no link, direct link with um, the quantity. So they're both indirect links. Now, if I, it's one more thing, if I confirm this order, you'll see that here I see my 
purchase order for 15 units and you see that he has reserved eh, or he's about he thinks he's going to match these 10 units he's going to use them for this manufacturing order which is my final product which is scheduled for the 16th thank you for watching this video and have a great day